how do I treatment plan dental implants for tooth replacement therapy? So this is a recent question that came in from a, from a colleague who was watching the channel, and he said, look, I'm a young dentist, and we as an industry have a lot of tooth replacement options available for our patients. So how is it that you uh, approach the concept of a tooth replacement, and how do you prioritize the different solutions? And the answer is, is that this one comes down to a bit of experience. Okay, and this would be absolutely difficult for a new dentist. It will take time, and let me explain what happens. In dentistry, we have something called herodontics. Okay, herodontics. We'll put it up here. We'll spell it out here. Herodontics. Okay. So the idea behind the concept of people saying herodontics is that a patient comes in with a tooth that's not doing well, and we can do amazing things today in dentistry. We, we have so many techniques and methods available to us that we can do almost anything, really, almost anything, especially if you have digital uh, CAD cam and printing technology, you can do almost anything. But it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So the idea is, is you've got a tooth that's not in really good shape. So let's call that the foundation for your house. Your foundation is not really good. And then what you want to do is you want to go in there and build a beautiful mansion on top of a shaky foundation. And as soon as you're done with it, there's a little bit of a tremor. And because the foundation is no good, the entire house collapses. Now, the house was built really, really well, but it was just on a shaky foundation. So teeth are like the foundation. If the tooth is compromised to the point where building something on top of that isn't going to last a long time, that's the same as the analogy I just gave. And what we call that in the industry is herodontics. We go, I just did herodontics in operatory three. I saved this tooth. It's great. And the patient calls the next day and says, it fell out this morning while I was eating my toast. And you go, okay. All right. So as a young dentist, this will happen to you. I guarantee it because what you're going to do is you're going to look at the tooth and say, I can save that tooth. I can save that tooth. It's like that Star Trek episode where he goes, I can do that. I can do that. Right? So it's just like that. Okay. So you're going to save that tooth and it's going to fail the next day. And if you're lucky, you're going to have a patient that's understanding. If you're not so lucky, you're going to have a patient that is very upset with you, has started to lose confidence in you and is going to give you a lot of uncomfortable conversation, okay? Where, you know, where they start to talk about, hey, I'm going to take you to the board because your stuff only lasts uh, 12 hours, you know? So what this comes down to is when we are looking at tooth replacement options, it's not sufficient to say, Mrs. Smith, this tooth is coming out. You have five options. We can do nothing. We can take it out and graft it and then decide if you want something later, we can do a flipper, we can do a unilateral partial, we can, do a, we can do a bridge, we can do a dental implant. You can go down the list. That's not how I do it, okay? And the reason I don't do that is I first listen to the patient's objective. I take into consideration their overall oral health and, the, and their age, okay? All of this plays into what I'm going to propose to them and encourage them to do is what I think is the most optimal solution. And let me explain. There's a difference between ideal and the word optimal, okay? We would like to have ideal outcomes in everything that we do, but sometimes we're limited by the surrounding tissues, the bone, the soft tissue, the, the anatomy, the health, to only be able to optimize the solution. And oftentimes an optimal solution, which is the best that we can do, given the circumstances that we have, is good for the patient. It's really good for the patient. So when I look at a case, if I think, for instance, let's say they have advanced periodontal disease. They have a lot of mobility, okay? Grade, grade one everywhere, grade two and grade three on localized teeth, okay? And they've been at this for a long time and they're missing a handful of teeth. You might say, well, Mrs. Smith, you would be a candidate for a partial, okay? In my office, they're not a candidate for a partial. I wouldn't build a partial on teeth that are mobile because we, taught, we call that partial a tooth extractor. 
because the clasp will be resting on mobile teeth, they'll just extract those teeth. So that's not in that patient's best interest because when those teeth are extracted, let's say in six months, now they have more missing teeth and they go, I just spent all this money on a partial and now I've got more missing teeth. Now what? Okay, so this is, this is where that experience comes in. You say, I know I can do a partial. It's just not in that patient's best interest, right? So when it comes down to dental implants, which I firmly believe 100% that if it's properly done, there's a strong likelihood that you will carry that solution to the grave, okay? When it's properly done. So caveat, big asterisks, it has to be properly done. And if it is, you could likely carry that solution to the grave. So if that's the perspective and the investment isn't that much different than saying a three unit bridge, then I'm leaning towards that dental implant. And I will explain that to the patient the same way. I will often tell them, you are a candidate for two solutions. They're about the same price. But the survival rate of a three-unit bridge in 15 years has been reported at about 50%. That's not the case with dental implants when they're properly done. It's more likely that you will carry that to the grave. And so this will take a little bit of time if you're new to dentistry, it's okay. You will experience cases where you go in and you do hierodontics because you, because you can, and that's what we're here for. We're here for saving teeth. And so when we go above and beyond to save a tooth and we do hierodontics, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And that will build a, a an understanding in your mind of how to weight the different solutions. So when you're talking to your patients, you can say, listen, for you, based on what you've told me and what we know about your health history and your age, your best solution in this particular instance would be a dental implant. We can do these other things, but if we do, here are the risks associated with them. And that's how I manage, and I suggest you consider managing the discussion about dental implants. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley. Follow for more.